Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the arrival of cloud profiles, new supercharger cube lounges, Tesla insurance expanding, and the huge tax credit coming soon for all EVs, including Teslas, so let's get into it. First up today, a feature that has long been requested and talked about by Elon Musk is cloud profiles. Back in 2017, Elon tweeted saying, we are going to move all info and settings to the cloud, aka server, so any Tesla you drive in the world automatically adjusts to you. He later reiterated this on Twitter and it hasn't been seen in the last five years. When you get into a Tesla now, you have your driver profile that saves your seating, steering wheel, climate and mirror adjustments, along with all of your settings on screen. This is a really great feature, but once you get into a new car or drive a another one, you have to start from scratch. Overall, not a huge deal, but Tesla has the capability to make cloud profiles, and it would mean that anytime you enter a Tesla anywhere in the world, you can have immediate access to exactly what you like in your Tesla and how you like to have it set up. According to Not a Tesla app, obtaining the release notes for an upcoming software release 2022.24, quote, Tesla is officially calling the feature Tesla Profiles. With this latest update, you'll be given the option to tie your driver profile to your Tesla account. They follow that up with specifics saying settings such as mirror, seat, and wheel positions will be synced across other supported vehicles. So if you're lucky enough to have multiple Teslas in your household and adjust your seat in one vehicle, then the settings will automatically be synced to the other vehicle. So it looks like you link your Tesla account to a Tesla, rental or otherwise, and then you can sync your driver profile. It appears that this will include seat adjustments, autopilot settings, driver preferences like braking settings, climate settings, navigation, media, recent destinations, navigation favorites, and data sharing preferences. Likely this feature has taken so long to come out because Tesla wanted to include all of these things. With things like media, navigation, and recent destinations, it will truly set Tesla apart even further. Many won't want to rent any other car because they know they can have the car set up exactly as they like with a quick sync of everything if they rent a Tesla. I'm very excited to see this feature come to be. Another feature that is being improved in 2022.24 according to Not a Tesla app is the position of the blind spot camera display. Currently on the Model 3 and Y, when you turn on your blinker, you can have it show the blind spot camera. It pops up in the bottom right of the screen and actually can end up blocked from view by your hand or the steering wheel. Now it looks like Tesla is changing this. Here's a screenshot in the top left of the screen and not a Tesla app says that you'll be able to choose between three locations for where this comes up on screen. This video demonstrates this perfectly and it's a really simple interface. If you want to reposition it, you simply drag the positioning of the blind spot camera where you want it for next time. No matter what, it has to block something, so giving drivers choices is great. The three locations they mention include the bottom corner closest to the steering wheel, the top corner closest to the steering wheel, or in the top corner of the maps area closer to the driver, as you can see in their video. This is just another example of how great it can be to get software updates over the course of ownership. It appears that with this update, you'll be able to choose where your blind spot camera is, that'll be saved to your cloud profile, and synced to any other Tesla you connect your account with. Really impressive stuff. One more area that Tesla is improving in software right now is range predictions. Range predictions are extremely important so that people can act accurately plan charging and not have range anxiety. According to at green the only, wow, 2022.20.7 seems to go into insane details to improve range predictions. Even tire pressure is taken into account amongst many, many other extra variables just added. Also takes into account energy loss to phone charging and 12 volt accessories, air density, battery heat slash cool, dot, dot, dot. This is a background feature that owners might not realize is there, but Tesla is ensuring that every aspect that is using battery is taken into account for range. This is great to see because I've definitely experienced an inaccurate range prediction that ended up adding an unexpected supercharger stop halfway through a road trip. Next up today, some big news for Teslas and a tax credit. Right now in the US, Teslas do not qualify for any federal tax credit. Tesla along with GM are ruled out because they passed the manufacturer eligible cap of 200,000 EVs. Once a company sells 200,000 eligible EVs, their cars are no longer available for this credit. It has actually been a significant disadvantage for Tesla, but it hasn't seemed to hurt their demand. Here's a chart of all EVs available and the tax credits they qualify for. Multiple cars from Audi, BMW, Fiat, Ford, Genesis, Hyundai, Jaguar, Lucid, Mercedes, Porsche, Toyota, VW, and Volvo, among others, qualify for $7,500 in a tax credit. No cars from Tesla or GM qualify, but that's about to change. The US Senate is planning to move forward with a new bill that will reform the EV tax credit. Quote, the main goal of the reform, and the one most people agree on, is the need to eliminate the tax credit cap after automakers hit 200,000 EVs sold since it is putting automakers that were early in pushing electric vehicles at a disadvantage. It also happens that these automakers are American automakers like Tesla and GM, while many foreign automakers still have access to the credit. Some of the points in this bill include 
include maintaining the federal tax credit of $7,500, eliminating that tax credit cap for automakers that hit 200,000 EVs sold. Tax credit appears to be at point of sale instead of on taxes, making it a much more direct impact on people buying EVs. And then, quote, in order to get the full credit, the electric vehicle needs to be assembled in North America. The majority of battery components need to come from North America and contain a certain percentage of minerals from countries with free trade agreements with the US. There's some EVs here that many think are American made, but are actually made in Mexico that will not qualify for this. They are also adding a tax credit on used EVs that is $4,000. Really great to see this for used EVs. Zero emissions vans, SUVs, and trucks with MSRP up to $80,000 qualify, electric sedans up to $55,000 qualify, and there is an income cap of $150,000 or $300,000 for joint filers. The bill is not law yet, but everyone is on board and it is expected to pass soon enough. The bill itself is very confusing as well, and there are a lot of specifics with these tax credits. It appears that the Model S and X won't qualify, but certain Model 3s under $55,000 will, along with the Model Y qualifying as an SUV under $80,000. For those cars, they will qualify for $7,500 off at the point of sale. An explanation of the bill specifically says, dealer can apply credit at time of sale. Again, this makes it much more direct for a customer as opposed to seeing the savings once their taxes are paid. As for the timeline of this credit, it will apply for vehicles purchased beginning January 1st of 2023, and the credit will terminate on December 31st of 2032. The point of sale credit doesn't stop there yet. Not only will many more used EVs, including many Teslas, qualify for $4,000 off at the point of sale, and many new Teslas qualify for $7,500 off at the point of sale, but there's a huge credit available for heavy duty commercial vehicles. A very important part of reducing emissions is reducing the emissions from fleets and large commercial vehicles. Most of these vehicles are very expensive, but Tesla announced the all electric Tesla Semi back in 2017, starting at $150,000 for a 300 mile range. The price will likely be more expensive when it truly comes out, but as part of this new build, the Tesla Semi will qualify for a $40,000 tax credit. A requirement for this credit is a weight of 14,000 pounds, which the Semi meets. Assuming there is no unexpected restriction here, this will be huge for the Tesla Semi, allowing fleet customers to take advantage of this all-electric truck for $40,000 less than Tesla is charging for it. That's big for these customers and Tesla as well once they bring this to production. As pointed out by Tesla Rati as well, many states have their own incentive on top of this, and in California, there is a high and zero emission truck and bus voucher incentive project. This offers incentives up to $120,000 for class eight sustainable vehicles. This paired with a federal incentive could make the Tesla Semi essentially free. Again, huge for fleet customers and Tesla in general. Judging based on Tesla's pricing today, this is great news for the Model Y, but not so great news for the rest of Tesla's lineup. A standard range Model 3 comes in under $55,000 MSRP easily, even with some upgrades, but the long range and performance Model 3 cap that. For the Model why though, both the long range and performance models come in under $80,000 MSRP for an SUV, so getting $7,500 there should be easy even if Tesla doesn't lower prices. For the Model S and X, however, no tax credit, and that does make sense for cars as expensive as these. Arguably, if you're looking at a $105,000 plus car, you're not needing a $7,500 incentive in order to make the purchase feasible. Now, as for the Model 3 though, I think we could see prices drop if this passes. On July 15th, Elon Musk said if inflation calms down, down, we can lower prices for cars. He followed this up on their earnings call to say, if I were to guess, and I would take this with a grain of salt, I think inflation will decline towards the end of this year. We are certainly seeing prices of commodities trending lower. If we see indications that the inflation rate is declining, then we would not need to increase our car prices. It's possible that there could be a slight decrease in car prices. But this is fundamentally dependent on macroeconomic conditions. Inflation, it's not something we can control. So if they do see that calming, they should be able to lower prices separate from this tax credit. Just a few days later, Elon followed this up to say inflation might be trending down. More Tesla commodity prices are trending down than up for what it's worth. This should mean that Tesla is in a place to lower prices soon enough. And the first car for them that it would make a lot of sense for come 2023 is the long range Model 3 so that it can get that tax credit. The long range Model 3 gets a 350 58 mile EPA range with stock wheels and comes in just about $3,000 over the MSRP cap for a $7,500 federal credit. Again, assuming this passes, I definitely see Tesla dropping the Model 3 under that price so that both of their more affordable long range vehicles can qualify. It would be an extremely popular option.
Now there's still a lot up in the air about this, but it's exciting that Tesla prices could come down after over a year of price hikes, and that a new point of sale credit will help even more people afford them. Next up today, Tesla Insurance has expanded to a few more states. Tesla Insurance is a new type of insurance that uses real-time driver data to determine your premium. Of the 11 states Tesla Insurance exists in, 10 of them have this feature. California is the only state without it, as that was the original state with the traditional Tesla Insurance model. Recently, Utah and Maryland were added, so you can get Tesla insurance based on real-time driving data in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Maryland, Nevada, Ohio, Oregon, Texas, Utah, and Virginia now. The next states that are expected to be added to Tesla insurance are Florida and New Jersey. What many people are seeing is that Tesla insurance can save them a lot, and Tesla is seeing the impact of real-time driving data on the safety of drivers. They are trying to reach as many states as possible, so we'll see how many more they can get by the end of the year. Next up today, as Tesla is continually expanding their super supercharger network, they have begun installing a new type of lounge. Many superchargers are simply located near shopping centers and places with restrooms, but a few superchargers feature a lounge like the one in Kettleman City. It has a ton of chargers and a lounge with coffee, vending machines, and Tesla merch for sale inside. Elon Musk has also talked about a new Tesla supercharger in Hollywood that will be styled like an old 50s diner and drive-in. Over in Germany this week though, Tesla partnered with BK World to deploy lounges in a cube format. Quote, BK World of course offers bathroom facilities facilities, while a comfortable lounge area invites drivers to linger. But the concept is far more extensive. For instance, it makes extremely efficient use of the small footprint. Various products are dispensed in a fully automated way. The food that drivers can purchase on site is healthy, fresh, and low in sugar. When selecting the product portfolio, the planners deliberately avoided working with large corporations and chose instead to focus on keeping things regional and sustainable. Together with entrepreneur and investor Marcel Jansen, work is even going on to develop an innovative and healthy food portfolio, especially for BK World. You can access the lounge from the app, and inside it features vending machines, a machine that will make pizza, restrooms, air conditioning, a lounge area with a Nintendo Switch, seating, and outlets. These are specifically deployable very quickly, and BK World says that they have plans for 300 locations across Europe. It isn't clear if these are going to always be partnered with Tesla, but it will work out very well if so. This is a perfect partnership with any company making a charging station that isn't directly close to places to rest, use a restroom, and eat some food. I really hope we can see something like this come to the US soon. We'll definitely see something as charging stations should be accelerating exponentially in the years to come. Next up today, Tesla has officially dropped lifetime standard connectivity support. When you buy a Tesla, connectivity is a big part of it. It enables a lot of features for customers, like updated navigation on screen, but also allows Tesla to collect data for things like autopilot. Tesla now sells a paid premium connectivity package at $10 a month to enable live traffic, sentry mode live streaming to your phone, video streaming, music streaming, and more. But the standard connectivity feature of navigation has been free for life until now. The wording has updated, and Tesla now says standard connectivity is included in your vehicle at no additional cost for eight years, beginning on the first day your vehicle was delivered as new by Tesla. If you are purchasing a used vehicle, you will be notified of how long your vehicle will include access to standard connectivity. After that eight year mark, it looks like your only paid option is premium connectivity, as Tesla says premium connectivity is available as an annual or a monthly subscription. No paid option to only get navigation data after eight years. Many are upset to hear this, but it makes a lot of sense. Tesla's fleet will be growing by millions each year, and including eight years of standard connectivity is already much better than most brands. Either way, it's an interesting update to note and could affect buyers of used Teslas in the years to come. Last up today, some updates about other automakers. The Department of Energy has announced a conditional loan of $2.5 billion for GM Ultium sales. This is a joint venture of GM and LG Energy Solutions to finance a battery factory in three states. The factories will be located in Michigan, Ohio, and Tennessee, and are expected to create 6,600 construction jobs and 5,100 operations operations jobs once at full capacity. Quote, in total, GM and LG are investing more than $7 billion via the venture to build three battery plants. Production at its Ohio battery plant is expected to begin in August, an Ultium spokeswoman said. The plant in Warren, Ohio currently has 700 workers. Production is set to begin at its Tennessee plant in late 2023 and in Michigan in 2024. This is big news for GM and their plans to manufacture a million EVs a year by 2025. Over at Rivian, it was announced that 
they will be laying off 6% of their workforce in order to focus on the production ramp of the R1T as well as their other vehicles. Layoffs have happened to a number of tech companies recently, including Tesla, but Rivian said, quote, we are financially well positioned and our mission is more important than ever, but to fully realize our potential, our strategy must support our sustainable growth as we ramp toward profitability. We need to be able to continue to grow and scale without additional financing in this macro environment. To achieve this, we have simplified our product roadmap and focused on where it is most impactful to deploy capital. Rivian CEO said, quote, to those leaving Rivian, I am genuinely sorry. Thank you for pouring so much of yourself into what we're building. You will always be a part of our story and continue to be an important part of our community. It's unfortunate to see, but it does make a lot of sense. They will need to pare down a little bit, focus on ramping and getting profitable with EVs at scale and expand in the future. They are aiming to build 25,000 vehicles this year. Honda this week teased the design process for the Prologue EV that they plan to launch in 2024. Honda is one of the furthest behind companies when it comes to electrification, but they are planning to deliver 100% electrified cars by 2040. This would technically be able to include certain hybrids. In any case, they are developing the Prologue SUV based on GM's Ultium platform and plan to launch it along with an all-electric Acura SUV. Overall, this video is really just a teaser of the design of this car that is a few years off, but it's great to see electric vehicle progress from another big brand. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the new paint colors that could be coming soon to the Model Y, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.